Hey everybody, so today I'm going to be unboxing my Ninja Foodie Smart Extra Large Grill. I am super excited to use it because where I live in Wyoming, it's not always warm. So I don't want to stand outside and freeze my buns off cooking any food. So it'll be neat to get this out and try it out inside. Right off the bat on the inside flaps, it just gives you a little more inspiration and tips. You can join the Facebook group and get all kinds of other inst insider recipes and tips and tricks like I just said. So when you open it, you obviously get your little owner's guide and then it actually tells you the exact model of your grill. This is the DG550 series and it obviously has all of your information and then it also comes with the Ninja Foodie Smart Extra Large Grill recipe book so that's always good and then this little smoke how to have a virtually smoke free experience because you know that's kind of the whole point if you're going to buy an indoor grill you would hate for it to be smoking up your house so and then it even goes into a quick start guide which I'll go through it here once I get it all out so now for the fun part so this is going to be your grate and it's obviously pretty decent in size it has those little hooks there set that down and this is your little wire brush so there's your little wire brush that you get to scrub your life away with okay now i'm gonna see if i can do this the right way or if i gotta do it my normal way oh, not bad at all so it's not terribly heavy to lift out of the box so that's good set in there packaged very well as you can see So this is it. This is the big grill. Take off that extra tape there. Just so we can get in and get going here. And don't mind, I do I did start my dishwasher, so if you hear something in the background, it's my dishwasher. Now we can get off all the tape. Oh, and there is your thermometer on the side there. Goodness, I just wanted to take the tape off. It's taped obviously very well, and I'm just trying to take the sticker off. I don't want to take the thermometer sticker off, no, I just want it to. Okay, let me set this back upright. Alright, I think I'm officially ready. So, inside we have your. Crisping basket, it looks like. So there is that. It's pretty good size. And you also get a pan to go with it. So, and again, it's a decent size here. I just stuck it in that one so you kind of get an idea. And there you have it. There's all the innards of the grill here. So let me do a little looking in the owner's manual. And I am more than certain I'll have to, you know, get the parts that need to be washed, washed up. So just for the sake of being here and having the manual handy, before first use in the owner's manual on page number three, remove all packaging, of course. Remove all accessories from the packaging and read this manual carefully. Alright. Wash the grill grate, splatter shield, and the crisper. Okay. 
crisper basket, thermometer, cleaning brush, and cooking pot and warm soapy water. So, underneath here is your is your splatter shield, and I wanted to see if I can get this off. how to get that off before I can clean it because obviously I can't show it to you if I can't get it off. Okay, I have figured out sort of how to get this splatter shield off. It is kind of tricky, just so you know. There is a little eject button. Well, sort of. I'll let you guys see it up close here before I put you back up to get it off. So yes, there is that little eject button right there. And it's not exactly the easiest thing, but you just push it towards the top of the lid. And this, of course, now I tried this. And it comes out fairly decent. You just have to kind of work with it a little bit. So yes, but it did say that this is washable along with the brush and the basket and the tray so I'm gonna go ahead and the grate so I'm gonna go ahead and get those all cleaned up and see if I can't get something cooking for us so everything is all clean and ready to go I'm going to put the grill pot in here and line it up with the little notches and since we're going to be grilling I'm gonna go ahead and put my grill plate in here as well and then the thermometer you it says in the instructions that it's obviously not dishwasher safe and that you should not immerse it in water so just an fyi be sure to not do that and it plugs in on the side of your grill i'm going to just shut it here because down here this is where it's kept for storage and so you can just take your little cover off and there should be a little spot. Actually, it's right here on the side, I believe. And you can plug it in. And so now it's plugged into your grill. And you actually get to leave that in the whole entire time while it's cooking. Just so you can reach your preferred doneness. So you actually don't even need that open at all unless you're just getting it out of the little compartment that it's stored in. And so this owner's manual is extremely thorough so when you do go through it I recommend taking your time it's taken me just a little bit of time to go through it just to read and see what I got going on here I do already have my hamburgers prepped as far as seasoning and stuff goes so and I did go ahead and reinsert the splatter guard up here and like I said earlier, it's just kind of a pain, so you just gotta be nice and take your time getting it on and off. So, let's just see. You can even do batch grilling in here. So, there's just a lot of different options with this particular model. It did say if you're cooking any frozen foods to not use the thermometer. But you can manually program your thermometer on here. And so in the quick start guide, it even goes as far as how to place the thermometer in your meats. And it just has a nice little guide that takes you step by step. So I'm going to see if I can't get this going here. So set that off to the side there. And like I said, I am doing hamburgers. So let me just see. I'm going to go ahead and... Before first use, make sure this is page six of the owner's manual. It's just talking about using that thermometer. Pull. Okay, I already have it all plugged in and everything. And once the thermometer is plugged into the jack, it will illuminate preset and manual thermometer buttons. Select like the desired cook function and cook temperature. And like I said, since I'm doing burgers I believe I need right. to do it on. Let's see about turning this on. It just goes straight to the blank screen and we are going to be grilling. And so 
There it is. That's what I wanted. It's hard to see, so I'm gonna get you up close to see what I'm looking at because the preset slash manual function is lit on the side here. So I'm gonna push it. And now you can see what we're looking at here up close. We are doing beef and we, <laughs> for hamburgers, we're gonna do well done. So we're gonna scooch over to see, I'm gonna see if I can, I'm playing with it here as you can see. So, nope, that's chicken, pork, fish, all right. So your different ranges there, if I'm not, so again, let me grab this quick start guide one more time. Now that we're doing stuff, aha, that was right. So there is, your doneness guide and for the sake of burgers we're going well so we're gonna do nine for our thermometer here so you use the little arrows and like I said we're gonna go oh it does start changing as you can see that on there too so that's pretty neat but yeah we're definitely going for well since it's hamburger meat and I believe let me grab let me set you guys back up here really quick just so I can make sure I'm following the steps in the manual correctly. Because like I said, I'm going through this my first time with you all. So I want to make sure I'm doing it all right. So let's see. All right. Preset manual, select the desired cook function and cook temperature. Press the thermometer button to enable preset. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And target temperature. And press the, okay. Preset will illuminate. Use the arrows to the right of the display to select your desired food type and arrows to the left to set the internal doneness of your food. So. Place the accessory required for your selected cook function in the unit and close the hood. Press start and stop to preheat. So, that's that looks all good to me. So we're going to start stop. And now we're going to be preheating. It did say that for this particular model it takes approximately 10 minutes to preheat. So I'm going to let it preheat. And... The nice thing too, I was going to say, when you're using the thermometer, if I read that correctly in here, on the grill function, you don't need to, okay, on cooking functions, using your thermometer on page number six, on the little note here, it says there is no need to set a cook time as the unit will automatically turn off the heating element and alert you when your food has finished cooking. So that's kind of nice when you use your thermometer here. And I will definitely get it, you know, inserted into a hamburger patty before I put it inside the grill here. So I will be back when it's done preheating. I did want to say it looks like we're almost ready to put our food in here. When I was on there earlier showing you the preset and manual button, I believe it was, we programmed it to be on manual. So when it started preheating, I just pushed this button again for the thermometer and you'll see now that the preset one is actually highlighted. And it's the same concept though. You would go through the whole process of setting your temperature again. So I just wanted to, let you guys know that I it might have looked like I was on the wrong button there but I did fix it before it was too late <laughs> so I think we're getting pretty close and of course you know with it being a brand new machine you know you will have a new machine smell I should say I don't know but it's just getting rid of all that leftover residue from like shipping and whatnot so don't be worried if it smells a little funky when it's heating up for the very first time in your house. I do like the fact that we have different options too. 
You can do your air crisp and roast and bake and broil and dehydrate. So that's nice. And as you can see, we are ready to add food. So be very careful when you open the lid. And as you hear, it will pause. And, and it's a big grill plate, so you can definitely add however many you want on here. I happen to form just four little patties. And I am going to stick the thermometer in there too. So, don't, don't judge my little patties here. I, <laughs> so I believe you just stick it in there, but hopefully without it falling out like I wanted to do. And I'm going to try not to burn myself. So don't judge me. I'm, it's my first time trying this. So I'm going to shut the lid here. But this hopefully not in the way too much, if that's even going to stay in. And we're just going to see if it'll work. And it's going to do its thing. So, I will be back here in just a little bit. I'm going to wash my hands really quick and then I'll give you guys an up close version here. So here's a better look up close here with the little tail of the thermometer sticking out there. Obviously I probably could have inserted it a little bit better but with it being, you know, not frozen patties, I think that's going to be okay. And again, you know, with me doing this for the very first time, this is a learning process for me as well. So I'll be back when it's all done. Also, I just wanted to jump on here. My husband just asked me how long does it have to cook and I said I wasn't sure until I came down here and looked at the screen. So with your thermometer inserted in your protein, this is your current temperature and this is the target temp that we're going to reach. So that's something I just learned. So yeah, just thought you guys should know that. And also while I'm on here, I know right now we're, you know, about halfway done cooking here. But there, I don't see a lot of smoke or anything coming out of the machine, which obviously for an indoor grill, you would want that. So, I mean, so far, it looks pretty darn promising. So, yeah. And obviously you can see my, like, my counter top and cabinets are a little higher than normal or, I mean, I can't really judge that, I guess. I mean, it kind of looks like they're higher than normal, but nonetheless, it won't have any problems fitting and obviously when I open the lid and stuff you can see that I don't hit my cupboards or anything like that so it is a decent size for your kitchen counter so yeah we're just cooking right along here so it did actually just flash I just barely missed it but it told me to flip my burgers and I'm sorry I missed that but so we're gonna go ahead and flip them really quick because, well, it told me to. So, just be really careful when you open it. And obviously be very careful when you're flipping your burgers or whatever meat you got on there. <laughs> As you can see, we're sliding right along. So. Whoa. And I'm gonna hope that this little guy stays in. As we flip him over. And be careful if you touch that, because it's going to be really hot. So, all right, we're closing it up and away we go. All right, as you see, we're nearing the very end here. So I can say that so far I'm impressed. Oh, and look at that, get food. Okay, well, I'm glad that it told me to get my food. And now it's going to let you know that your food needs to rest. So, I'm going to do just that and get them out of here. And you rest anywhere from like 5 to 10 minutes and obviously your little timer, timer is going to count up. So, yeah, just be really, really careful. And you take them out so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and get that out of the way I'm going to leave it open just to help it cool down 
faster. And let me pardon, grab my owner's manual just to make sure I am doing all the good stuff. Okay, transfer the protein to a plate while rest displays on the screen. Thermometer does not need to still be inserted. The protein will continue to carry over cook to your set doneness, which will take about three to five minutes. This is an important step as not resting could lead to results looking less cooked. Carryover cook times can vary based on the size of protein, cut of protein, and type of protein. So, there's a little bit extra for you. So, if you do take out the thermometer, when you're done, just be careful because it's going to be a little hot, obviously. So I'm just going to do that. Let him sit off to the side there. So yeah, that. Let you guys take a better, closer look here. But I found it to be pretty easy, obviously. And as you can see, it there's not much of a mess on here, so that will make it for easy cleanup. And it's just letting you know that please let it rest for at least one more minute. But that's how at least you cook homemade hamburgers in here. I would like to definitely try some try out some different proteins in here. We do like chicken and stuff like that in our house, and obviously a good steak once in a while wouldn't hurt. So. I mean so far and the cook time was pretty fast I didn't actually time it so I'm anxious to put a timer like on my stove or something and see how long it takes to actually cook something with the thermometer inserted since if you do it with the thermometer it knows exactly what correct temperature you want it to be at so yeah I did just cut into one just to make sure that it actually did do what it was supposed to and get it to the temp that I wanted and it's correct so that's one more awesome bonus is it actually cooks it the way that you want it to which is always nice